evening, everybody, from Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. We bid you welcome to Reds Baseball. The Reds meet the Atlanta Braves' third game of the four-game series tonight as Cincinnati tries to start another winning streak. An eight-game streak snap last night as the Braves behind the pitching of righty Rick Matula shut out Cincinnati three to nothing. For the Reds tonight, right-hander Bill Bonham. For Atlanta, right-hander Doyle Alexander. We'll be back to take a look at the starting lineups in just a moment. If you're ready now, the starting lineups tonight for the Cincinnati Reds. Leading off and playing center field will be Dave Collins. Ken Griffey in right field, bat second. Getting third at shortstop, Dave Concepcio. Batting fourth, the left fielder, George Foster. Danny Dreesen will bat fifth and play first base. Hitting sixth, the catcher, Johnny Bench. Ray Knight at third base will bat seventh. Hitting eighth at second base, Junior Kennedy. And batting ninth, the Reds pitcher, right-hander Bill Bonham. Again for Cincinnati, it's Collins in center field, Griffey in right field, and Concepcion at shortstop. Foster in left field, Dreesen at first base, bench catching. With Knight at third, Kennedy at second, and Bonham pitching. For Atlanta, Jerry Royster leads it off. He'll play second base. Catcher Biff Polkaroba will hit second. Left fielder Gary Matthews will bat third. The first baseman and cleanup batter Chris Shambliss. Hitting fifth, third baseman Bob Horner. Batting sixth in right field, Dale Murphy. Brian Asselstein will be in center field batting seventh. Hitting eighth at shortstop, Luis Gomez. And batting ninth and pitching for the Braves, his second start of the year, right-hander Doyle Alexander. Again for Atlanta, it's Royster at second base, Pocaroba catching, and Matthews in left field. Shambliss at first base, Horner at third base, Murphy in right field. With Asselstein in center field, Gomez at shortstop, and Alexander pitching. Dave Collins, Ken Griffey, Dave Concepcion is how we'll stack up here in the top half of the first inning. Collins batting 351, no homers in five RBIs. And against Atlanta pitching, has gone eight for 23, has driven in one run. Alexander checking in with Pocaroba, sends in the pitch. Collins swings and fouls out of play to the left side. Strike one, and this game is underway. Davey's been in a bit of a slump. He was hitless in four times up last night, was 0 for 4 in the opening game. And one for four in the series wrap-up against San Francisco. So he's had only one hit in his last 12 times to the plate. The strike one pitch on the way to Collins. Swung on and grounded to first. There's Shambliss. He makes a pickup and goes to the bag for out number one. This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by Cincinnati Reds Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Cincinnati Reds Incorporated. So Collins grounds out to Shambliss and in now right fielder Ken Griffey. 207 batter and the pitch to Griffey is a breaking pitch. It's over at the knees for a strike. Reds with a game and a half lead on the Houston Astros who dealt the Dodgers a 7-4 loss in Los Angeles last night. Pitch is high and outside for a ball. One and one to count on Griffey. Horner in on the grass at third base. Alexander with a motion and a pitch, and Griffey checks his swing. It's too low, and it's two balls and a strike. The beautiful weather here in Atlanta today, and more of the same expected here for the final game of this series tomorrow afternoon. Swing and a miss. And Griffey out in front as he dealt him an off-speed pitch. Two and two on Ken Griffey with Dave Concepcion coming up next. Defensively for the Braves, they've got Shambliss at first, Royster at second. Horner at third base and Gomez at shortstop, while the outfield features Matthews in left, Asselstein in center, and Murphy in right. Pocaroba, the catcher, hangs aside, the break-even pitch to Griffey, and that's a fastball too much in on him, and the count's full. The Reds, eight wins and one loss. The Braves, one win and seven losses. Swung on and hit up the middle for a base hit. Ken Griffey with a line drive single to center as he takes a turn at first base. Hammering Alexander's full count pitch to center field. And now Dave Concepcion steps in. Davey batting 361. Couple of home runs and nine runs batted in. He and Danny Dreesen continue to be co-leaders on the club and RBIs. So the infield at double play depth, Alexander out of the stretch, and Davey bluffs a button, takes a strike. 
Concepcion having hit now in seven consecutive ball games last night. He was two for four, had a couple of singles. Griffey with a short lead at first base. He's running, pitches swung on and missed. Pocarobas throw down to second is way high. No play at all on Griffey at second as he picks up a stolen base. Well, Marty, that's another phase for Kenny to go through, and he had a good jump and stole it quite easily, but I think that's something else that Ken had to find out uh, as far as his knee, and uh, things looked real well as he took off. Reds are now five for five in stolen bases. That's the first for Griffey. Dave Collins has three, and Donnie Warner has one, and a base hit now will get a Reds run in. Two strikes on Concepcion. Alexander straightens up. Checks a runner, pitches, Davey strikes out, swinging. Well, the two-out batter will be George Foster. And Foster, one of a number of fellows who came out to the park this afternoon to get some extra hitting in. Ken Griffey was also among them. George has really been struggling at the play with only one base hit in his last 22 times up. He's hitting an even 200 with two homers and seven RBIs. Well, George trying to get Griffey in from second as Concepcion is struck out for the second out of the inning. Foster swings and misses. Paul Ruggie, our plate umpire, Jim Quick at first. We've got a newcomer to this group, Bob Engel, has joined this crew for the final two games, and he's umpiring at second, replacing Fred Brocklander, and Jerry Dale's over at third. One strike pitch. Foster swings and doesn't get that one. Strike two. Danny Dreesen would be up next if Foster can reach here, but Alexander keeping the ball effectively down and right now doing a job. He looks to Griffey at second. He stops at the belt. He pitches, and he misses down with that one. One ball and two strikes. This is one of only two night games in the National League. The other will have the Astros and the Dodgers meeting in Los Angeles. All the rest of the action played this afternoon, and only one game in the American League being played tonight. Chicago at Baltimore. All the rest played today. Ball and two strikes on the waiting Foster with Griffey at second. George takes strike three, and that's the inning. So good pitching by Doyle Alexander as he registers back-to-back -back strikeouts of Concepcion and Foster. No runs, one hit and one left. After a half inning of baseball, the Reds nothing, and the Braves are coming up. Bill Bonham ready to deal with the Atlanta offense as we move to the bottom half of the first inning here at Fulton County Stadium. Jerry Royster. The Braves second baseman and leadoff batter hitting at 233. No homers and a run batted in. Bottom, his second start. Face the Braves in his initial outing. Allowed six hits and three runs in six and two-thirds innings. With four strikeouts and a walk. Got a no decision in that game. Right-handed batting Jerry Royster and Bottom with a pitch and Royster takes a strike. Jerry bluffs a bunt, takes a pitch wide of the plate, and it's a ball and one strike. Tom Seaver will go tomorrow afternoon. Right-hander Tommy Boggs will be making his first start of the year for Atlanta, and then it's on to Houston, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights. Two balls and one strike. I understand from Wayne Minshew, the Braves director of publicity, who talked with Astro officials today that in that three-game series, the Reds will be seeing Byrne Rule, Nolan Ryan, and Ken Forsh. Ball three is outside in the dirt. Three balls and a strike now after Bottom got his first pitch in to Royster. He's missed wide of the plate with the last three. On deck, catcher Biff Pocaroba. Bottom kicks and throws. Royster takes ball four. Well, the Braves get their leadoff man on, and that brings up the switch-hitting Atlanta catcher, Pocaroba. Pocaroba checking in at 200, no homers and two RBIs. Once again, we remind you that the annual Kid Glove game is coming up at Riverfront Stadium Monday, April the 28th. Tomorrow is Not Hole Sale Sunday. Buy a ticket to the Kid Glove game when a Not Hole player knocks on your door tomorrow. 
a citywide endeavor tomorrow by the youngsters who play not whole baseball in greater Cincinnati. Bottom misses high and away for a ball. Royster with good speed, leading at first base. Pitch is swung on, a high chop, wide of first, gloved by Kennedy. He'll get the runner at first as Royster moves on to second base. Pokeroba out, Kennedy to Dreesen. Royster now in scoring position for left fielder Gary Matthews. Bill Bonham is 1-7. He's lost four in his career endeavors against the Braves, including a record of 2-1 last year. Well, hoping to make his first decision of 1988, winning one tonight. Matthews hitting at 188 with two RBIs. A pitch low and outside. Ball one. Stretch the look and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Good changeup. And it's all even up on Matthews. A ball in one strike. Jerry Royster at second. The outfield pretty much straight away for right-handed batting Matthews. He starts to offer at the next pitch but holds his swing up. It's a ball and it's two and one. On deck, first baseman Chris Shambliss. Reds were scoreless in their half of the first inning. Although getting a one-out hit from Ken Griffey, who promptly stole second. Alexander then chalked up strikeouts of Concepcion and Foster. Pitch. Swung on and popped up. And that ball will climb out of play and drop back into the seats off the first baseline. So Gary Matthews with only one, two RBIs so far this season, trying to make it three right here against Bill Bottom and the Reds. And Bottom got in on his hands, a slow dribbler left side. Ray Knight up, throwing to Dreesen for the out. And Royster moving on to third base. A real jam job as Matthews breaks his bat and grounds out to third, and that brings up Chris Shambles. Hasn't taken this man very long to curry the favor of the Atlanta fans. He is hitting at 276. Homer in the ninth inning night before last to deprive Frank Pastore of a shutout. And that has accounted for his only run batted in. So Royster now at third. Chambliss swings and fouls it off. Chambliss came up to the big leagues in 1971 with the Cleveland Indians. Stayed with that club until 17 games into the 74 season where he went to New York up high one and one and was with the Yankees until he was traded to Toronto and very quickly then traded from Toronto to this Atlanta club during this past offseason swing and a miss on a pitch down one ball and two strikes Chris a 31 year old native of Dayton Ohio 282 lifetime hitter. He's had some good years in Major League Baseball. He grounds towards second. There's Kennedy, and he throws him out to end the inning. So the Braves threaten, as did the Reds, but they get no runs, no hits, and one left. And after one complete, Cincinnati and Atlanta, nothing, nothing. Does that make sense? That makes a whole Thank lot you. of sense. Thank you. Congratulations. That is 10 steals by the opposition against Atlanta this season, and Pokoroba has yet to throw anybody out. Bench, it's a very high fly ball along the right field line, hanging up long enough. Murphy on the run. He makes the catch in the bullpen. Here's Reeson tagging at second. He goes to third, standing up. Dale Murphy had quite a ways to go for that ball, and catching it right around the plate area and the Atlanta bullpen after a long run Danny Dreesen tagged up and went into third base standing up so the Reds with a golden opportunity here with one out and Ray Knight also riding the crest of a seven game hitting streak in which he's batted 333 going nine for 27 he doubled in three trips last night and a two run homer out of here off Phil Necro on Thursday night now the Atlanta infield will play up Knight batting 273 with a home run, three RBIs. Dreesen at third, representing the game's first run. And Ray pops it up, but out of play. That ball will drop just off to our right. 
Ray and Harry Spillman and Atlanta third base coach Bobby Dews honored in pregame ceremonies tonight by the mayor of Albany, Georgia, James Gray. As you know, Ray is from Albany and Harry is from Dawson, Georgia, which is a suburb. Here's the 0-1 pitch coming tonight. Swung on and lined into right center field. Base hit. Danny Dreesen trots in from third. Ray Knight with a run-producing base hit. And the Reds lead it 1-0. So the speed on the base pass paid off as Dreesen walks, stole second, moved to third on benches, fly out to right, and scores on night single. That brings up Junior Kennedy. Had a nine-game hitting streak stop, or an eight-game hitting streak stop last night. But batting 414, that's the best on the club among the regulars. He's knocked in five runs. Alexander's throw to first. Knight gets back, and now he throws to first again, and a little bit quicker this time. Chambliss tagging Ray on the helmet. Stretch the check in the pitch, and Kennedy checks his swing. Ball one. Now they check with first base umpire Jim Quick. Apparently Biff Pokoroba asked Paul Rungi. So a ball and no strikes on Kennedy with Bill Bottom coming up next. There goes Knight. Pitch is swung on and missed. Pokoroba with a high throw. It goes into center field. Up with the ball. Asselstein trying to nail him at third. Head first slide. Knight is safe. Well, the Reds here in the early going are trying to run Alexander and Pokoroba right out of the ballpark. Marty, you watched Biff Pokoroba throw and I remember you talking about Bobby Cox saying that uh, Pokoroba is throwing well, but, but uh, Biff just has to wind up so much to throw the baseball and that gives the runner an extra two steps in all honesty and uh, anybody with any speed at all uh, should steal on Biff and as we've explained, he had uh, a uh, surgery on his shoulder two years ago, I believe, and uh, well, that's what the game is all about. You find a weakness, you take advantage of it. Absolutely. That'll be a stolen base and a throwing error. The infield again is in, and the 1-1 pitch to Kennedy way inside. So two steals here in the inning, one in the first. Really puts pressure on the defense, only one out. Kennedy levels a bat. Alexander comes to him. Junior swings and misses. Two and two. Junior had three RBIs in the opening game of the season against the Braves. And the Reds won that game behind Pastore. Nine, nothing. He grounds it foul between the bag and the coaching box at third. The count holds two balls and two strikes. So one run is in. One man out, Ray Knight at third. Stretch and the pitch. Check swing on a fastball that misses and the count's full. Now the 3-2 pitch to Junior Kennedy. And Alexander issues his second walk of the inning as Kennedy heads to first. Bottom squares to bunt, pops it up, foul territory, and nobody can get to it. Chambliss, Alexander, Pokoroba all giving chase in foul ground on the first base side, but couldn't track it down. Reds leading the Braves one to nothing as we bat here in the top of the second. Dreesen open with a walk, stole second, advanced to third on a foul fly to right by Bench, scored on Ray Knight single. Knight stole second and moved to third on a throwing error by Pokoroba, and Kennedy has walked. Only one out on the inning, bottom squares again, bunts, and that's going to be caught by Alexander, throws out at first. Soft line drive, Doyle Alexander grabs it, and fired on to the second baseman, Royster covering to get the double play and end the inning, so the Braves get a big break. As Bonham could not put it down on the grass, and in the inning, one run, one hit, one error, and one left. And in the middle of the second, the Reds won, and the Braves nothing. Pokoroba hangs the sign. A stretch by Alexander. The 0-2 pitch. 
John swings, ground ball. Gomez has it, hit his leg and bound into center field. Foster a score easily as Matthews is up with the ball. That ball hit Luis Gomez on the right leg and caromed into shallow center field. And that's going to be an error charge to Luis Gomez. And right now, Hoyt Boyer, the Braves pitching coach, going out to the mound to have a talk with Alexander. That ball hit like a rocket and they're charging Gomez with an error. The Foster scores from second base. The Reds lead it two to nothing. Right now that an unearned run, the second error of the game by the, the Braves. Boyer heads back to the Atlanta dugout. I don't think Gomez even touched the ball. It took a wicked hop on him, but it didn't even look like on the right shin and found it on into center field. All right, here's Ray Knight. He drove in a run, our first run in the second inning. Alexander works. Knight swings and fouls it straight back. Bench at first base. One out. Reds lead it two to nothing. Alexander has the sign. The pitch. Ray swings, fouls back to the screen, and Alexander in front, 0 and 2 to Ray Knight. Junior Kennedy waiting on deck. Ray came into the game with a 273 batting average, a home run, three RBIs. Stretch. The 0-2, way outside, goes through Pocarova, right back to fifth, throw down to second, not in time, and that'll be a wild shit, uh, pitch charge to Doyle Alexander. That ball hitting the railing and bounding right back to Pocarova. He turned and threw to second, but not in time to get bench. John now at second base to count of all two strikes to Ray Knight. Alexander has stretched the pitch. Change up, low and outside. Two and two. New balls, two strikes to Ray Knight with bench at second base and one out in the run in. Alexander ready and delivers. And swung on and missed, and that's the fourth strikeout for Doyle Alexander, an off-speed pitch. A two away, and Junior Kennedy, the batter, now Pocarobo will go out to the mound to have a quick word with Doyle Alexander with Bill Bonham scheduled up next with two outs, so we'll see what they do with Junior. They're going to pinch the junior, but certainly wouldn't think they would give him anything good to hit. Alexander sets the pitch. Swung on, bounced to Gomez at shortstop. And his long throw to Shambliss, and that's the end. Red's got an unearned run here in the fourth inning. On one hit, there was one Atlanta era, one runner left on base in the middle of the fourth. Reds two, Braves nothing. That keeps the inning going for Johnny Bench, who is flying out foul to right and reached on an error by the shortstop. Let me see if Danny will be running in this situation. He stole second easily back in the second inning. Alexander, thinking about it, throws to Shambliss. Now the stretch and another quick throw to first, and Danny just back in time. And Alexander put that throw right on the money. Kind of a rough thing for a pitcher to have to be thinking as much with men on base as Alexander has had to think about tonight. He comes to bench, and he's down with a first pitch. 
Griffey stole second in the first inning. Dreesen stole second in the second. Knight stole second also in the second inning. And Foster picked up a stolen base in the fourth. And a throw to first again. Dreesen comes back hands first. Two out, runner at first, sixth inning. Two to one, Cincinnati over Atlanta. Throw to first, safe again. Defense pulled around toward the left of the diamond. The outfield deep toward left. Gomez in the hole at shortstop. And with Shambliss forced to hold against Reeson at first base. And you consider where Royster is playing on the step on the outfield grass and really pulled towards second base. A gaping hole. On the right side of the infield for Johnny Bench. And he got a pitch that would allow him to go that way. 1-0 pitch. There goes Dreesen. Swung on and pulled foul at third. Danny again getting a good jump. But he'll have to go back as the count goes to a ball and one strike on Bench. Bench leveling the bat. Alexander deals to first again and safe again. But another close play. Right-hander straightens up. Pitching. Pokoroba calls for a pitch out, but nothing going on with Danny Dreesen. Two balls and a strike. Throw to first again, safe again. That's six or seven times now that Alexander's gone that way. Recent calls time with Jim Quick. Walks away from the bag and cleans himself up. So Doyle Alexander fighting a war on two fronts. At first base with Dreesen at the plate with Johnny Bench. Danny bouncing off the bag. And the pitch to the plate. Bench swings and misses. Two and two. Bobby Cox can fault the pitching he's gotten in this series. Phil Necro pitched well with the exception of one inning Thursday night. Then Matula last night and Alexander tonight. Dreesen's running. Pitch is taken. Throw down to second. And again it's high as Royster had to really climb the ladder to keep that ball from going into center field. So five steals and as many tries for the Reds tonight. Dreesen has his second. Marty, it's just as we pointed up earlier, the release by Poparoba and just takes so much time to get rid of the ball. Danny really didn't have that good a jump that time, but uh, Okoroba takes so much time to get rid of the baseball. So three and two on Johnny Bench. And now the payoff pitch, and he hits a very high fly ball down the left field line. It is hooking, and it's going to be out of play in the seats. Foul ball. Tell you one thing, any scouts from other National League clubs on hand who might be here for this series or who have already scouted the Braves, although in Cincinnati the Reds really had no great need to try and run on Biff Pokoroba, but, well, I'll tell you, maybe some National League clubs really taken off against this young man. Holding count of three balls and two strikes. Alexander taking a long time on the mound. Now he's ready. He pitches, and Bench hammers one to left field. Line drive, Matthews, make, no, he couldn't get it. Here comes Dreesen around third and onto the plate. Johnny Bench heading towards second. He's in standing. That ball was hooking a bit, but it looked like Matthews got there in time to catch it, and he could not come up with a baseball. So the Reds lead it by a score of three to one. And we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds baseball network. Two base error charge to Gary Matthews. Ray Knight, ground ball, base hit into left field. Johnny Bench held up momentarily. Now takes a turn. He's going to try and score. Here comes Matthews' to throw. Cut off by Horner. Four to one. Knight goes to second. Johnny Bench made it, but I don't know what he was thinking out there in second base. Unless he lost count of the number of outs in the inning, but he stopped dead in his tracks. 
and that ball went through for a base hit, and a good throw could have caused him some problems. Be that as it may, a run scoring single for Knight. The Reds have scored twice in the inning and now lead by three. And left-hander Larry Bradford will start to throw in the Atlanta bullpen. So Ray Knight, two for three, two RBIs. They're going to put Kennedy on with first base open and Bill Bottom coming up next. Runners at first and second, two out. Bottom ground ball. Off the glove of Horner, into left field. Here comes Knight to the plate, five to one Cincinnati. That's going to be an error against Bob Horner. All three of the runs in this inning, unearned runs. And the Atlanta Braves, after a sterling performance last night, reverting back to their old ways again. They have committed two errors in this inning and four tonight. And a total of 20 on this season. Compare that figure with the number of errors Cincinnati has made. The Reds have committed only three errors in their first nine games coming into this, this one tonight. Dave Collins 0 for 3. And really, the Braves, uh, they committed 16 errors in their first six games, went errorless in their last two before this one. Collins takes a strike. Collins in a heck of a slump. Now has not had a hit in his last 14 times up. Kennedy at second, bottom at first. Swung on and ripped to right field, but a foul ball. It's off the facing just to the right of the Atlanta bullpen. So a three-run inning for Cincinnati. Taking advantage of some shoddy defensive play by the Braves. Two strikes on Dave Collins. He pops it up and it'll carry out a play off third. Reds with only four hits, no errors. Braves one run, three hits, and four errors. Alexander trying to make Collins a final out of the inning. He pours home the pitch. It's in the dirt for a ball. One ball and two strikes. Collins waving the bat around, and now Alexander takes too much time to suit Dave, who backs away from the plate. Kennedy's at second, Bottoms at first. Collins, the eighth man to hit in the inning. And the Reds have had only one hit so far in the six. Foul back again by Dave. Alexander shaking off Pocaroba. Now stretches, pauses, and pitches. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Second straight time that Alexander's gotten Collins. But the Reds in the sixth get three runs, one hit, two errors, and two left. And through five and a half, the Reds lead the Braves five to one. Rick Camp and Larry Bradford towing in the Atlanta bullpen. Reds with Foster at second, Dreesen at first. The pitch to Bench, check swing, and it's high a ball. Inning started off with Grippy grounding the short, Concepcion a fly ball to the right, but Foster walks in four pitches, and Dreesen singles to right. 1-0, John takes it. Low and it's two balls, no strikes. Ray Knight, the on-deck batter. Now 
Alexander to the belt. The pitch swung on, line foul down the right side. And count two balls to strike to Johnny Bench. Bench away from the plate. Now steps back in. Pokoroba hangs the sign. Alexander still looking. Now the stretch. 2 1 on the way. Swung on and missed. Breaking ball. And the count evens 2 and 2. Reds with Foster at second. Dreesen at first. And two out. And a 2 2 count to Bench. Two two on the way, low and outside. Full count to bench. So with two out, Dreesen and Foster will be moving on the pitch. Alexander ready. The runners go on the pitch. Swung on and hit up the middle in the center field. A base hit. Foster score easily on his way to third. Danny Dreesen and the Reds lead it six to one. Well, Johnny hits the ball hard again. This time he picks up a base hit and RBI is third of the year. The Reds lead it six to one. That's six hits in the game. And Ray Knight steps in. Bobby Cox out of the Atlanta dugout heading to the mound and we'll see if Bobby decides to make a change or not. Grayson to third, bench at first base, a run in. Camp and Bradford throwing in the Atlanta bullpen. Cox looking down that way and we'll see if he does make the change and he will. Right-hander Rick Camp will come on to face Ray Knight with two outs and runners at first and third and a run in. Well, Rick Camp will relieve Doyle Alexander. Alexander works six and two-thirds innings. Allows six hits, struck out seven, walked five. Six runs, three of the Mern. So we have a break in the action here at Atlanta. The Reds leading six to one. We'll be back after this word. He's into the stretch, checks the runners, and delivers. Knight takes it down low a ball. Larry Bradford continues to throw down in the Atlanta bullpen. The pitcher is going to hit fourth in the bottom half of the inning. Camp works. Knight lines it foul off to the right side. The gentleman with the glove down there, I don't know what he's brought it for. He got, looks like Brenneman in the stand. You like it when I agitate you, don't you? Do I like it? Well, let's say I'm used to it <laughs> and expect it. Doesn't happen every day. Yeah. One one pitch swung on and foul to the screen, and it's a ball, two strikes to nine. Six one, Reds lead. Now Dries in the third base and Bench at first. A ball, two strikes to count to nine. Camp to the belt delivers. Swung on and missed, and that's the inning. The Reds get a run on two hits. There were no errors. Two runners left on base, and at the middle of the seventh, Cincinnati six, Atlanta one. Tommy Hume will try to nail it down here in the home half of the ninth inning. Braves looking at a five-run deficit. And they'll have the big hitters coming up, Shambliss, Horner, and Murphy. Shambliss, a man who has accounted for the only Atlanta run with a home run to right in the fourth inning off Bill Bonham. Tommy Hume allowed a single with two out to Pokoroba in the eighth, his first inning of work. But got Matthews on the ground out to third. Well, Shambliss one for two. That home run he walked in the sixth inning. This bullpen apparently will get busy again. It looks like Dave Tomlin will start to throw along with Doug Bear. Hume to Shambliss. 
strike call. They've got the gentleman attired in that Monk's robe on hand here again tonight. He's gained the fancy of the Atlanta crowd for a couple of nights now. One ball and one strike. They had an article in the Atlanta paper about him today. Well, yesterday it might have been. He's a restaurant owner here in Atlanta who is simply a baseball freak. Fouled off by Shambliss. One ball, two strikes. Last call for the Atlanta Braves. Hume sights a sign. He rocks, kicks, and fires, and Shambliss takes a low breaking ball. Two and two. Now the 2-2 delivery. And a bouncing ball to third. There's Knight. And here's his play to Dries and one out. We'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. WIFE Indianapolis is Reds hot in 1980 and has the Larry King Show overnights, the most listened to talk radio show in the world. Mutual's Larry King talks to the nation and to Indianapolis overnights on WIFE. One away in the Braves' ninth, Horner's 0 for 3. Takes it in on him, a ball. Bear and Tomlin stay ready just in the event that Hugh might need some help. Tommy falls behind 2-0. But throwing the ball very well right now for the third time out this season. This is a very high fly ball to center field. Geronimo coming on, and he's there to make the catch. Two out. Well, they come down to the final out, and they hit her Dale Murphy. Hey, you got the kind of pitching the Reds have had so far this season. And the need for those relievers are not real great. That's not to say that starting pitching will continue all year as it has been through the first 10 games. You don't expect that. Nice to know you had the kind of people that the Reds do and Hume and Bear and Tomlin and Soto. Paul Mosco, who's a swing man, so to speak, pitches down and in for a ball to Murphy. Paul make, made one start earlier and did a fine job against the Giants. Murphy hits it in the air. That should be the game. Pop up, third base side, bench and foul ground, and this one belongs to the Reds. Tommy Hume sets him down in order in the ninth inning. The Reds, another night of super pitching as they go nine and one on the year in defeating the Braves by a final score of 6-1. to one. We'll be back in just a moment. Four big elements or three big elements in the Cincinnati win over the Braves tonight. The Reds just simply came out running against Biff Pokoroba and Doyle Alexander. They attempted five stolen bases and were successful on all five tries to run their totals on the season now to nine stolen bases in as many attempts. They took advantage of four Atlanta errors. The Braves have now committed 20 errors this season in nine games. And the Reds got super pitching again. Bill Bonham allowed four hits in a run in seven innings to get the win. Tommy Hume pitched one hit shutout baseball over the final two innings. The Reds got the scoring underway in the second when Danny Dreesen let off against Alexander with a base on ball, stole second, and moved to third on Johnny Bench's foul fly to Murphy and right. Ray Knight then single to right center, making it one to nothing. Knight stole second, advanced to third on Pokoroba's throwing error, but the Reds could not get him home, and the Reds led 1-0. In the fourth inning, Foster stroked a base hit to left field and stole second base. One out later, Johnny Bench had a hard ground ball that got away from shortstop Luis Gomez. Foster came around to score, and the Reds led 2-0. In the bottom of the fourth, the Braves got what proved to be their only run when Chris Shambliss homered over the right field wall, his second home run of the season. The Reds then struck for three unearned runs in the sixth inning. With two down, Danny Dreesen walked and picked up his second steal of the night. Johnny Bench's line drive was misplayed for a two-base error in left field by Gary Matthews. Dreesen scored 3-1. to one. Ray Knight's base hit to left field got Bench home 4-1. to one. And after Kennedy got an intentional walk, bottom grounded to third, Horner coughed it up. Knight scored, it was 5-1. to one. And then the Reds scored their final run in the seventh with two out. When Foster walked, Dreesen had a base hit, and Bench single to center field, scoring Foster to round out the scoring. The Reds had six runs, eight hits, no errors, and nine left. The Braves had a run on five hits, four errors that paved the way for three unearned runs, and they stranded five. Bottom, 1-0 the winner, Alexander 0-1 the loser. 
So the Reds will try to wrap up the series by taking three out of four behind the pitching of Tom Seaver in the 2.15 start tomorrow. While the Braves will go with right-hander Tommy Boggs, it'll be Neil be making his first start of the 1980 season. We'll be on the air with the pregame shows on most of these same stations beginning at 1.45 Cincinnati time. Again, the final score tonight in a game that took two hours and 25 minutes to play before a crowd of 9,684. The Reds 6 and the Braves 1.